How's it going everybody? I'm Daniel, you're watching Daniel Tech. So today I finally found the time to film a video that I wanted to for a long long time and that is the top 10 hidden features for your Mac. So uh, I've done quite a lot of videos like this regarding your iPhone or for iPad and these are quite successful, those tips and tricks and, and little features and you guys seem to really love it. So today I decided to bring this to the Mac world. So here we go top 10 hidden features for your MacBook, your iMac, for your Mac. Okay, so let's get started. The first hidden feature I'm going to show you is how to lock your Mac the easiest way possible. Uh, to do that, all you need to do is using a little shortcut, and that is Command, Control, and Q. So Command, Control, Q, and you instantly go to your lock screen, and after a few seconds, it will actually turn off your screen. So that's pretty good. Because let's say you are in a workplace and you need to get up all the time, talk to a coworker or something like that, and then you just want to lock your screen very, very fast. Okay, next up we're going to talk about Safari. So something very, very handy that not a lot of people know is that it can actually recover closed tabs and windows using Safari just using a very, very easy shortcut. So let's say here I have like the Apple website, I have my YouTube channel, and I have Netflix. Okay, so let's say just like. Uh, accidentally closed this tab right here so then but I, I really wanted it back so what you have to do is just hit shift command and T and then it will recover and not only it will recover but it will recover and come back to exactly where it was on the, on the, on the page so as you know as you saw before it was on the iPhone section of the website so it doesn't go to the home page of the website it just goes to the exact page you were before so that's pretty good and it still works uh, it also works if you close multiple tabs so let's say you close two so then it's shift command T and shift command T again so then as you guys saw goes back to my channel goes back to the iPhone page and it also works if you actually close the whole thing so you close the tab, uh, the window all, all the window you close everything and then you open Safari again and then a command shift T and then it opens a separate window as you guys saw that's my first window and then it opens a second window with the exact same pages uh, exactly where they were so uh, my internet is a little bit slow today so like bear with me so every 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 page exactly where there was where it was so that's pretty good and it, it it also works if actually command quit so if you quit Safari entirely it'll do the exact same thing command shift T and then you get the three the three tabs as well exactly where you stopped it and for some reason my camera is having a hard time focusing on this Apple website so yeah that's it Okay, now let's talk about Notes. I'm going to show you how you can collaborate with other people using the Notes app. And I just created a lot of like A notes here so you don't see all my stuff. So uh, let's say I created this note right here and then I added a lot of text to it. Okay, and then now I wanted to share this note with somebody so then we can both uh, read and write in this note and then collaborate together. So you have to click on this uh, icon right there as you guys can see is a person with uh, sorry about that is a person with a plus icon so then tap on this icon right there and then you guys can see you you have the add people so you can add people by sending this little link via mail uh, this invitation via mail via messages you can copy the link and then you can even put it on social media if you want and then you just share the note on social media and people will see that note but won't be able to edit it on social media so then you just hit the messages button or mail share and then you, you select the you select the person you want to send it to so that's pretty cool and then you have a separate special icon right there uh, showing that that is a collaboration note so it works very well I use it all the time and then it's very good for planning a party for example it's great okay another feature that not a lot of you guys know is that you can actually rename multiple files in a very easy way this works very well with photos and, and music files and things like that so I just took these random screenshots and they all have pretty much the same name but it's very hard to identify them so what I do is I'll select all of them and then right click and rename six items as soon as I rename six items I go for format and then I can create a custom format so I'm gonna put like uh, like it is right here SS so that's like screenshot okay and uh, start numbers at 1 
okay so then I can put even like screenshot Mac for example and start with one so after I hit rename it's gonna say screenshot Mac 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 so that's pretty good because now I can identify them better and they all have a pattern and it's very cool and easy another thing that I loved when I discovered it is that you can actually schedule your shutdown time and wake up time on your Mac and that's actually very very helpful if you are downloading some file overnight or, upload, or uploading some file like you want to have the computer on but you don't want it all night long for example so all you have to do is open system preferences as I have right here and then go for energy saver and then right there under battery you can go for schedule you can go under battery or under power adapter no problem so hit schedule right there and let me zoom in so you guys can have a better look and then right here uh, you can select and actually schedule the way you want it so you can put for uh, start up or wake every day at any specific time so let's say uh, you you always go to work at 8 or something like that and you want your computer up and ready when you open it so then you can put every day at 8 for example right here so then it will be up and running at the time you want and you can put it to sleep every day at what time or if you are in a situation that I said like downloading or uploading you can say for example today is Monday so I want it to shut down shut down on Monday that's today at for example uh, 3 in the morning because I will be asleep at that time and I want it to shut, to, shut, to shut down so that's pretty much it so it's pretty cool you hit OK and you're done another feature that not a lot of people use but is very very handy is smart folders all you have to do is click on your finder and then go to file new smart folder and right here you can click on this gear icon and then for some reason I have to hide cert criteria first and then show cert criteria first and then as soon as I uh, hit this search I can select the criteria I want this smart folder to show so let's say I want for uh, kind no I want for date so uh, create a date within last one day so then here I'll have all the files that were created within the last one day so I hit save and then I can sell, I can name this this new smart folder as uh, last created and then hit save and then it will actually be saved right here on your sidebar as last created and then I have all the files that were created as I said in the last 24 hours and as you saw the criteria here is very very vast so you can select the kind less open the contents uh, the name you can select uh, obviously after if it's date it's regarding time or if it's size it's regarding the size of it and everything so it's very handy and I think if you guys dedicate a little bit of time using that you see that your productivity will get much better another very useful shortcut is bring up emojis I use emojis all the time I'm pretty sure you guys used to and uh, in Mac there's a little trick that you can actually bring up emojis within the notes app, mail app, safari app, anything, uh, iMessages, anything that you can input text, you can bring up emojis. So all you have to do is hit command, control, space, and then in this, this little pop-up will show up. So then you can actually type your emoji. It was just not selected here. So then you can uh, type your emoji and then it will be right there. So that's pretty handy, pretty useful, and then you can use emojis that simple. If you are like me and if you have Bluetooth speakers and then you have an Apple TV at home and things like that, generally uh, you end up having to change your output source of sound all the time because sometimes it's an internal speaker, sometimes it's a Bluetooth speaker, sometimes it's an Apple TV or something like that. So there's a very, very good shortcut that you can use and it is right there at the top bar so see that little sound icon right there all you have to do is hit option and click so then you see right there the output device so right now is uh, internal speakers but then I could select my Apple TV for example and the input device which is of course your microphone so internal microphone but if you had an external microphone you could just select that as well 
So that's very useful, very quick, and then you can quickly access your input and output devices for your sound right there, one click away, not needing to go to system preferences. Okay, this is probably my favorite feature of this video, and that is picture in picture for video playback. So let's say you are right here watching on your YouTube page, you're watching a video, and then you actually want to go to another uh, tab or another window and do something else, but still keep watching and listening to that video. How do you do that? It's actually pretty simple. All you have to do is right click on the video twice. So then you click once, and then you click it again. Again, right click. So then you have here enter picture in picture. So you tap that, and then your window, your video, your video little window will go right there at the bottom. But what happens if you want to keep this little window exactly uh, in a certain place in the screen? For example, right here, it will always uh, stick to one side. So all you have to do is hit Command and Move, and then you, you place where you want, and then you click. So then it will stick exactly where you want. So let's say you want to go to another website. Okay, I want to read something at the New York Times, for example. So then you're reading the information right here. Okay, and then you can play the video. Sorry, you can play the video. And then again, like command and click. It's right there, fixed. And then I'm watching the video and reading. So that's pretty damn cool, and I love this feature. Now, last but not least, we are very used to typing on our iPhones and iPads and double tapping on the space button to automatically put a period and a space so then you can still uh, keep typing on your, on your text, not having to actually physically go and stop and clicking on the period button. So you can actually do the same on your Mac. So let's say you are tapping here, double tap on your space button and then it'll do exactly that. If it's not enabled on your device, I'll show you how to right now. It is very easy. So you click on System Preferences, and then you go to Keyboard, and then you go to Shortcuts, sorry, you go to Text, and then here, Add Period with Double Space. So you just, mark, you just check this little box right there, and then you're good to go. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a lot of time. I had a lot of fun doing this because I learned quite a lot, actually, and it was great for me. And I hope you liked it too. If you did, please hit the like button down there, and also the subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. And when you hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the little bell icon so you get a notification on your phone as soon as I post a new video. So that's pretty much it. I see you guys later. Bye bye.